Hello friends and welcome back. Today's pick a card reading is the second installment in the Triple Goddess series. This is a three part series about messages from the different aspects of the Triple Goddess. If you are unfamiliar of the Triple Goddess symbol or unfamiliar with the Triple Goddess symbol, this is what the symbol looks like. Um, I actually just painted this with watercolor and uh, I think it turned out beautifully. I actually have intentions of making these into stickers so if you would like one of these um, let me know down in the comments and I will actually get to making these into stickers. <laughs> so the triple goddess, I do explain it a lot more thoroughly in the first video which I will link up in the cards above as well as in the description box below. Um, I will also link it in the um, comment section. But the Triple Goddess is the Maiden, the Mother, and the Crone. The Mother section of the Triple Goddess is what we are talking about today. Today's Pick a Card will be using tarot and oracle cards to give you messages from the Mother aspect of yourself. So the full moon of the triple goddess symbol is what symbolizes the mother. This is the phase of a woman's life which is typically around childbirth and pregnancy, hence the full moon, like a full belly. And now, again, like I explained in the first video, you don't have to be a mother and you don't have to have intentions of ever being a mother to embody motherly energy. We all know people who are just embodiments of motherhood even at a very young age. And that's what the mother aspect of the triple goddess is. I mean we all have the maiden, the mother, and the crone inside of us at all times. We all exist as this triple goddess. Um, some of us just are in motherly stages at different times in our lives. So the mother is associated with summer, it's associated with fertile energy, um, you know, things blossoming and coming to life and, you know, yeah, the, um, you know, the stages of growth before harvest. The energy of the mother is also nurturing to nourishing, um, full of life, respectful, loving energy. So for today's reading, I wanted to tell you about the decks that I picked. So the first deck that I picked is actually the Animal Totem Tarot. And I picked this deck because I honestly, I just love the, the Empress in this deck. Let me see if I can find her. I wonder if, I've already pulled the piles for today. So she may be in a pile, she may not be. But the empress of this deck, I just absolutely love. It's a big ox just laying down in the field and she's just so full. Oh, there she is. So here is the empress card. Again, I just absolutely love this depiction of the empress because she's so different than what a lot of people or a lot of decks portray the empress as. The empress is usually you know, a beautiful woman, usually very curvy, very sexy. Um, maybe she might be pregnant, but I just, I just think that this ox is so wonderful. Um, so that's why I picked this deck, just literally because of the Empress. <laughs> and then the second deck that I picked is the Earth Magic Oracle. I picked this deck because of the earth energy that is in it. Um, I always think of Mother Earth and nurturing the earth, nurturing our planet. So that's why I picked the Earth Magic Oracle. And then the last deck is what is on top of these piles and this is the Enchanted Map Oracle. And I picked this because I like to think of mothers as guiding you know, as they're raising the next generation, they're guiding them to be the best versions of themselves that they can be. And I always, you know, a map 
guides you along your journey. So I thought this was a good representation for this reading as well. And then I'm also going to use the Moonology deck like I did last time. We're just going to shuffle that at the end of each pile. But before we get started, I want to talk about this card. If you watched last week's video, this card, the Full Moon in Gemini, which is the answers you, you need are coming, jumped out with every single pile. I literally shuffled the Moonology deck off camera between each pile, and then I shuffled them on camera, and this came out with every single pile last week. So I think it's very important that we remind ourselves of this, that the answers we need are coming. Um, the maiden energy was very youthful energy, very inspiring energy, it sometimes can be impulsive too. So we have to remember that sometimes it's worth the wait. And as we jump into the message from the mother, well, you become a mother after nine months of incubating your little one in your womb. So I think this card was just so important last week. So let's just remain patient. So let's get started with this week's reading of the message from the mother side of the Triple Goddess. So just like last week, we have three piles. We have pile one, pile two, pile three. I forgot to turn my lights on, so let's do that. So I want you to listen to your intuition as to which pile calls to you. I did pick three piles because we are talking about the Triple Goddess. When you are ready, the timestamps will be listed in the description box as well as the top pinned comment. So let's get started with pile one. Hello to all of you who picked pile number one. We're going to start with your tarot cards in this message from the mother side of you. So we have the Queen of Cups, the Two of Wands, and the Chariot. Hmm. This is interesting because we have the Moose as the representation for the Queen of Wands here. And I feel like this Moose is, it's very much a just keep swimming, like just keep going. You got this, you can't stop now, like just, just keep going and you'll get to the other side. And I feel like that sometimes is very important energy for us mothers to remember, and really just anyone. Um, to remember because sometimes we seem we feel like it's just it's a never-ending battle like we're just swimming to keep our heads above water and I mean if you look at the moose here she doesn't even have her head above water she's practically walking on the bottom of the riverbed here with her cup and everything looking under the water and so we have the two of wands here which is which is about decisions you know, which, which way are we going to go? And it's almost like when you're thinking of it with this moose, you could walk along the bottom or you could try frantically to keep your head up above water and float. And sometimes, I mean, if, if you're a swimmer, then you realize that sometimes it's actually quicker to just go underwater and just do what you need to do. You can hold your breath and just go for it and come up when you need air as opposed to frantically, um, frantically swimming at the surface. So it's like, it's, it's about the decisions that you have to make. And then we also have the chariot here with the uh, depiction of the orcas here. And orcas, otherwise known as killer whales. Um, it kind of reminds me of the mother energy of being willing to do anything to protect your cubs, your babies, whether it's from the killer whales or whether you are the killer whale protecting your young. But killer whales or orcas, they also are some of the fastest moving uh, whales and they also just, they have such a long range. They can be found in quite a few different coastal waters. Just like mothers. I mean, mothers are all over the place, right? <laughs> you can't look anywhere without finding us. Um, 
But I feel like all of these cards together, it is about listening to your intuition, about where you're going, what's guiding you, and how you're going to get there. Um, paying attention to yourself, you know, like, it's okay to go under the water and swim fast, but you have to remember to surface. Even the orcas, I mean, they can't hold their breath forever. They have to surface, right? So even when times are tough, when you feel like you're under the water, remember to come up and to breathe and to, you know, take time for you. It's like coming up to the surface to breathe is like your self-care, your time to be who you are outside of being a mother. So often as mothers, we will tend to put all of our energy and um, both physically and mentally into our offspring, sometimes even spiritually, into our offspring, and then we can get burnt out. And so I feel like these three cards all in combination are saying like, make sure you're taking time to put your head above water, make sure you're taking time for you, make sure you're taking time to breathe. Okay? And then we have the card of forest, which is breathe. <laughs> and then we have the shaman which is ancient healing wisdom and I was literally just talking about taking care of yourself healing yourself by making sure that you're taking time to breathe this could be making sure that you're taking time in nature if that's where you feel like you are connected to the mother earth um but with not all the water energy I mean we have the queen of cups the two of wands which is literally like a beach and then we have the chair which, which is water um so this could also be talking about understanding where you feel at home. For some of us, it's in the forest. For some of us, it's by the ocean. Perhaps even for some of us, perhaps for you, it is where the forest meets the ocean. You know, you're not quite in the ocean. You're not, maybe you're not a swimmer, but you appreciate it. But you're also not one to be backpacking into the woods, into the mountains. You like to be right on the right on the cusp between the two. Um, but it's about finding your happy place and making sure that you're taking the time to go there. Even if you can't physically go there, you know, go there with a documentary on Netflix or go there mentally through meditation. Just take time for you. Take time to breathe. Take time to focus on yourself, okay? You have the decision, the power within you to focus purely on your children, on your offspring or someone else's children, because again, not all of us are biological mothers. Um, it doesn't make you any less of a mother, especially if you really embrace that motherly energy. Um, but you know, sometimes it's also just babysitting your nieces or nephews and that kind of thing. Um, but in that moment, you're still acting like a mother figure. And, um, you know, sometimes you just have to remember to take time for you. Okay? <laughs> and then we have the card of One Ring Circus. And that's on it. what honestly popped into my head when I saw this card was that, yeah, sometimes it feels like it is a One Ring Circus, right? Sometimes the kids are all over the place, jumping off the walls kind of energy, and it's just like, my wondering circus is not big enough for all of this energy. Um, and sometimes it also feels like you can't put any more love into the circus. It's like, um, you know, if you're welcoming another child or planning another child, it's like, how can I love some, like, more? But there's always more love to go around in your circus. And then we have the card of Peaks of Joy, which is actually 33. So we have birth, life, and death, the cycle of rebirth within this card. And Peaks of Joy, it's, yeah, when, when you're a mom, sometimes there are peaks, sometimes there are valleys, sometimes it seems like you've fallen off of a cliff, but it's, it's about focusing on that joy, focusing on the love, on the compassion, and um, embracing the moments, being mindful of the moments, okay? So now we're going to 
pull some Moonology cards. Give them a really good job. <laughs> Get a Moonology card for pile number one, please. today. So we have a time for healing. We have you are good enough. And both of those really speak with what I was already talking about with the ancient healing wisdom and taking time for yourself knowing that you are worth it. You have, you're very close to achieving your goal. Don't let pride get in your way. Have faith in your dreams and work through your fears. Okay. I don't even know if all of those are going to fit on screen, so let's move them a little bit closer. There we go, that should all fit. Okay. Work through your fears. I really feel like this work through your fears corresponds with the killer whale, whale with the orca. Sometimes some of our biggest fears in motherhood are about keeping our children safe, keeping them safe from predators. And a lot of the time that fear is not existent in the now, it exists in the present or as a result of something that happened in the past. So it's about, um, especially if it's something that happened to the past, it's working through that, that healing. Um, for some of you, with the, with the there's a lot of representations of a full moon. Um, so this is also a lot about release, which I feel with the work through your fears, this might be about releasing any fears you have around motherhood. This could be fears around becoming a mother, fears related to your own mother. Um, it could also be about with the have faith in your dreams and that you're very and that you're very close to achieving your goal. Even with the pride, I feel like this is releasing something that's no longer serving you. Um, thank you, Air Player. This is releasing something that is no longer serving you. And it could be something in regards to not feeling like you are able to be a mother, not feeling like you're good enough to be a mother. Um, and I mean, this doesn't have to be a biological mother either. This could be someone telling you that you're not, someone might even have told you that you don't have motherly energy, um, or if you um, say we're pregnant and it wasn't planned, this could be releasing the guilt or the negativity that was forced upon you around that, circum around that situation. Um, you don't you don't need that energy like if you kept the baby or you didn't it's not my place to judge it's not someone else's place to judge that is your decision and um, you need to do what is right for you okay and then but I do feel like the the biggest thing is just releasing that negativity releasing that guilt even so mom guilt is such a it's a powerful thing right like we've i as a mom i mean i feel guilty for like the smallest little things like i gave my kids sugary cereal for breakfast and now i feel guilty because i know it wasn't the best thing but i mean sometimes you do what you had to do right <laughs> sometimes you just have to you know feed the circus and just get them fed and go about your day and not feel guilty about it. So, you know, release the mom guilt, release feeling guilty over things that are out of your control, and um, 
Yeah, I think the most important message from the mother for this reading is just to focus on yourself when you feel like you need to. When you feel like you've been underwater for way too long, don't forget to come up for a breath, okay? So that is your message if you picked pile number one in this Triple Goddess Pick a Card. If you liked this video and you want to see the Corona aspect, then make sure you hit the subscribe button because that video will come up next Monday, okay? Or on Monday, in a week. <laughs> Love, light, and happiness to all of you. Have a fantastic day. Bye. Hello to all of you who picked pile number two. We are going to start with your tarot cards for this message from the mother side of your triple goddess. So we have the king of wands, the six of wands, and the eight of wands. Okay, first thing that pops into my head here was don't let pride wear you down. Okay. It's like when you are so excited for something that you've done and you're feeling super motivated and you want to keep going and you're just, you're pushing yourself and pushing yourself and pushing yourself, um, especially when it is externally motivated. You know, like if you keep doing something because someone else is telling you that you did a good job or because someone else is proud of you. Um, if you keep doing something because of external um, positive reinforcement, you're going to burn out. This king of wands here, he looks so exhausted. He's just like flopped down in the dirt. He's just like, I need a break. Um, and how many moms are like, around there, like, I just need a break. <laughs> right? Um, but then the six of wands, like this is, this is victory. This is accomplishments. And it's like, it's saying, you know, it's, it's okay to feel good about your accomplishments. It's okay to share those accomplishments with others. But make sure your motivation, make sure your inspiration is coming from within. Um, if you're doing something because someone else is telling you to do it, that's when you're going to burn out. That's when you're going to get exhausted. Um, that's when this Eight of Wands is going to feel like you're just chasing a target that you will never be able to get. Um, as opposed to those wands in front of him being what's leading him and you know like just pulling him along and said you're kind of chasing and just needing to go after and it's you know a struggle okay so just um whatever it is that you're doing in life make sure that your inspiration your motivation is coming from within making sure that you are connecting with the reason why you're doing it okay And we have New Moon Promise and Dawn, which is New Beginnings. Yeah, so it's almost like you have to make the promise to yourself to go after this dream. And when you can make this promise to yourself, as opposed to making this promise to someone else, then um, it'll be like a, a new dawn, a new day, a new light is being shined on what you want to achieve, on what you want to go for, for on what your goal is. Uh, the big focus is of making the promise to yourself, okay? And then we have Dry Desert and Wizard of Awareness. I'm going to move those around because I feel like that Dry Desert can go with that horse and the Wizard of Awareness can go with this promise. So this dry desert, I mean, look, it, it looks like they could be running through the same place. Um, with a dry desert, it almost feels like you're going about it by yourself. You're there by yourself. You're all alone. And yes, I was saying you need to have motivation and inspiration from within, but it's not about doing it by yourself. It's just about relying on yourself for the motivation. Um, we don't have to go through... A parenting journey we don't have to go through um, a creation journey of any kind whether it is you know creating children or whether it is creating a new project um, a new painting a new song a new book um, or just even you know bringing to life new ideas of any kind we don't have to go about it by ourselves but so often we feel alone in in the journey or on the journey 
Um, so it's, a, you know, it's when you can connect with yourself and be with, with the wizard of awareness. It's, you know, being aware of the circumstances around you, being aware of the situation around you, and being willing to receive help if you need it. So often, you know, we close ourselves off, like, I don't want someone else's opinions, I don't want this, I don't want that. And then when you do need help, you just still have that mentality of, I can do this by myself. We don't have to do it by ourselves. I mean, again, I do feel like the inspiration needs to come from within, but that doesn't mean that you can't have external support. Okay? Um, and it's actually interesting, we've got the three spirals in the background of the Wizard of Awareness. It is the three, too. So we're talking about the triple goddess. So this is, you know, um, again, new beginnings, but it's also rebirth. It's the number three. It's the birth, life, and death cycle. Um, you can let go of the idea that you have to do it all by yourself. And, that you know, that is the death of that idea. And you can have a rebirth into this concept that you can receive support, you can receive love on whatever your journey is. You don't have to fight and do it all by yourself, okay? So let's pull a Moonology card. I'm gonna close my window because kids are outside playing. Okay, so let's pull a Moonology card. Now group number one had like six cards jump out, so please Triple goddess. <laughs> Let's go for just three, maybe. <laughs> you have messages for the mother, please. Or messages from the mother, please. your key to success, confidence in yourself, confidence in your abilities. I do feel like that's a very powerful message along with these three cards. Again, it's the confidence to trust yourself. It's the confidence to give yourself this promise. And then we have don't let your past hold you back. Again, it's that new promise, that new beginnings. And it's a time for healing. Yes. So the mother really wants you to know that the way that you've defined yourself in the past, the way that you've um, set up boundaries, the way that you've gone about life in the past doesn't need to be how we go into the future. You can always change your story. You can always change your perception. Um, you can always be willing to be aware of the circumstances and to make this promise to yourself to go forward in a way that makes you feel inspired, makes you feel motivated, as opposed to feeling run down and overburdened and overworked, okay? Um, but I feel like right in the middle here we have the confidence is your key to, confidence is your key to success. And I feel like this is a very important card for you. It does come down a lot to confidence. It does come down to sticking up for yourself, to being able to set these boundaries, and to be able to trust yourself, honestly. Okay? So that is your message if you picked pile number two for this triple goddess pick a card. If you want to see part three, which is the message from the crone, then you will have to hit the subscribe button because that video will come out next week. Love, light, and happiness to all of you. Have a fantastic day. Bye. Hello to all of you who picked pile number three for this triple goddess message from the mother reading. So we're going to start with your tarot cards. You have the Hierophant, the Eight of Cups, and the Four of Pentacles. Okay, very interesting energy here with this Eight of Cups because we have the Salmon, which is very motherly energy. She's going upstream to spawn. You can see her belly just full.
full of eggs and ready to spawn to begin the next generation. We have the Hierophant over these two keys, watching the Northern Lights and just, you know, guarding these keys, the, the keys to the future, the keys to the next generation. And also this Four of Pentacles here, planting the seeds, planting this pe pentacle and it's starting to root. It's so often um, squirrels will plant an abundance of nuts and seeds and then whether they forget where they planted them or if they just planted more than they needed. I mean, they don't even really plant them. They, they bury them for the winter. But quite often acorns or other nuts and seeds are forgotten about or missed and a new tree will grow thanks to the squirrel who left that acorn. And like the Four of Pentacles here, it is sprouting new life. So I do feel like, I don't know if people who picked Pile 3 are mothers, or if you're going to be a mother, if you are pregnant, then congratulations. Um, but this isn't also, this isn't always about literal motherhood. Like, it's not about literally getting pregnant and having a baby. Um, it's also the, like, you know, the birth of new ideas, the birth of new concepts, of new, um, it, it's beyond physical motherhood. You know, it could be Putting, taking an idea from your head and making it something tangible in this reality, whether it's creating a business or finally getting around to writing that book that you've been working on or wanting to work on. Um, it could be, you know, creating something um, with your hands through, like, woodworking or, you know, whatever. It doesn't have to be literal motherhood. For some of you, it might be, but I do feel like for a lot of you, it is just... With the keys on this Hierophant card um, and the Northern Lights, it's like you've been inspired and you're unlocking. The, the Northern Lights is kind of like your inspiration, your aha moment, and you're finally taking those keys and unlocking the door to the next step, the next stage, the next part of creation. With the full moon on the Eight of Cups here, I feel like this card is saying, like, you know, we need to release our fears around what we are creating and just trust our instincts. You know, the squirrel doesn't, the squirrel doesn't doubt where it's putting its nuts and seeds. It just buries them and it goes and it knows that it has to get more. It doesn't, they're like, oh, well, Maybe I should have put it under beside that tree, or maybe I should have put, oh, maybe I should have put it over there. And, you know, it just, well, if over there needs something, I'm just going to go put more over there, right? So the full moon, it's about reflection and thinking upon us, upon ourselves and shining light onto the areas that's preventing us from taking those keys and opening the door to the future. Okay. Let's see. We have the card of rebirth, yes, and solitude. Look at that beautiful sky on that solitude card. So this is about taking time for yourself um, outside of physical motherhood, taking time for yourself so you can reflect upon your ideas, reflect upon the concepts and reflect upon the concept and motivation and bring it into this tangible reality. Um, whether, again, I do feel like so many of you, it's creating something. Um, a book, a painting, art of some kind. Um, it could even be, you know, creating the life of your dreams. It's a rebirth to be able to escape what is holding you back, release what is holding you back. Um, but it will take this island solitude, this reflection upon yourself to see what that is. Okay. Now we have the card of details, details, 
and wide open. This is actually interesting. We have 42 and 43. That's progression. So I'm going to put them that way. I was going to put details over here, but with the wide open card, it's like you need to be willing to see all aspects of yourself so that the details will emerge. Okay? You're hiding something from yourself. And only when you are willing to see what you are hiding will you be able to see all the details. And it's almost like the forgotten, um, the forgotten seed here is, you know, it, you don't even realize it's there until it's starting to come above the surface and into the wide open air. Okay, the wide open environment. And then seedlings often look very similar. It's hard to tell little tiny seedlings apart. But then as they grow and as they develop, the details start to emerge and you can tell what kind of plant it was. You can tell what kind of seed was put in the ground. Um, so it's like, you know, it's like, so you got to open yourself up to this, to this transformation. And even as I'm looking here, there's a little butterfly. So this is, this is about transformation and being willing to, to change. Do you feel like there's a big change coming for you, all of you who picked pile number three. And between the the northern lights, the aurora borealis and that full moon, I do feel like even on the white open card here, she is looking to the skies on the solitude. The the ray of light is coming down. It's like you need to be able to look up and be on yourself. Okay? So let's pull a few moonology cards, maybe three cards, please, with the message from the mother. Thank you. So we have Prosperity lies ahead, and then there's another one. Flip. No. Okay. With prosperity lies ahead, this could be, again, something that you're creating tangibly. That could be, you know, a business or a career opportunity, a financial opportunity. But you have to be able to step into this next phase, this next energy. Nothing is yet set in stone, the mutable moon, and we have a fiery climax approaches. Yeah, so this is moving forward through this energy, releasing this full moon. It's about releasing, releasing what is no longer serving you. We've got it there as well. And understanding that nothing is set in stone, you can change it. Um, even once this seed starts to develop, if you have to dig up that tree and transplant it to somewhere else, you, know, you can do that. You can, you can move, you can shift, you can change your ideas. But if you're too afraid to even go for your ideas, then you are, um, you're fighting against the current, right? But then we also have the depiction of the salmon who is fighting against the current to go spawn. So it's like, you know, sometimes you do have to fight against the current. Um, and it's, sometimes it's not easy, but if you're really feeling like the current isn't the right spot for you, you're not on the right river, then that is when you need to adjust and change, okay? So that is your message if you picked pile number three for this triple goddess reading. If you want to see the next part of this reading, which is the message from the crone, you're going to have to hit the subscribe button because that video will be coming up next week. Love, light, and happiness to all of you. Have a fantastic day. Bye.